Hey friends, today I want to introduce you to Rita Ferrugia, who is a lover of life and the CEO and founder of happybeingwell.com with a mission of being the number one self-care community in the world. Her mission is to awaken a billion people globally to their own love while teaching them how to reprogram their subconscious, align with truth, play with the universal laws, and create a daily self-care practice. It's through a commitment of her own daily self-care that she's been able to create all of this. And she sees the potential and the opportunity that we all have when we can eliminate the noise of the world, stress, anxiety, and all of our rapid thoughts. Because this allows us to be able to align with our personal truths, love, clarity, focus, intuition, confidence, and really become who we're here to be, right? So this process does allow us to know who we are, it deepens our compassion and our ability to love ourselves, love our neighbor, raise the consciousness, all the things. Welcome to the show, Rita. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. And as someone who teaches self-care, I'm sure it started with a personal experience or something that inspired you to make this your mission. So when did self-care enter your world? What's the backstory? Well, um, you know, for me, self-care is such an integrated approach. And so I think, honestly, I, you know, I think when you think about it, we've all done doing self-care since we were, you know, like being able to wash our own face and brush our own teeth, right? That is a part of self-care. Um, and I mentioned that because the more and more I strengthened my personal development journey, the more and more I was better able to take care of myself. Um, because I was, you know, when I had blinders on, when I had self-worth issues, I was so focused on the external world um, that I really wasn't really taking care of myself. And then of course, when you get into learning about personal development, um, you just kind of regurgitate what you hear the gurus say, okay? And you really don't understand what it really means. You're just, well, I, this is my, and it, 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 I went through this and I see um, when you do the actual work, when you actually understand what that means in terms of expanding your consciousness um, to be able to live in peace, it, it, you have to literally do like, ask yourself questions, like be more present as to why am I doing this? Uh, is this giving me peace? Is this causing me stress? And a lot of people, including myself, uh, once upon a time, I didn't really realize when I was stressed out, when I did have anxiety, I just lived life. I just, you know, went through that routine of life, you know, do, do complete my to-do list um, or just numb it out with Netflix or numb it out with, you know, okay, it's time for bed. It's, you know, numb it with food, right? So... Yeah. It definitely was like building blocks to kind of get to the point of committing to self-care and literally doing the work and then like really taking care of myself, like, you know, and investing into products to take care of my skin, to have it glow and look youthful. In fact, I look younger than I did, you know, um, probably a few years ago, um, you know, just, just because of that journey to just not let the external get me so rattled up and be so stressed out. Um, and um, yeah, I honestly, like, because then I was really being empowered to actually live in my inner peace and live in my, my own truth and not literally let the external world hypnotize me into thinking this is what I want, you know, this is what I desire or allowing past traumas um, to kind of dictate and control my behavior that leads to basically destruction and chaos and confusion mm -hmm. um, because you're trying to, you're fixating on some kind of external, whether it's an event or it's a person or it's a thing that you're trying to 
to turn around to get that, you know, either unconditional love or whatever it is that you think is going to fulfill you. Um, but it's, you're totally, you're just living in an illusionary, an illusion. And um, so, and I see like a lot of too, like a lot of, cause I have my podcast too. And I, um, I run, you know, you run, I run across, you run across people. We've all run across people who are teaching spiritual stuff or teaching whatever, maybe their business coach and they don't actually embody the truth because they're just maybe still stuck in that um, learning the buzzwords, saying the buzzwords, but they really haven't, they didn't really do the inner work. Yeah. So the, and that's, the inner- that's so hard to explain that embodiment piece. Like I can totally relate to the, cl- the Pinterest cliches of like, I had a tote bag 10 years ago that was like, be the change you wish to see in the world. And I was like, representing that everywhere. And then it wasn't until I had a personal life experience of seeing how my own healing heals the people around me. And I, it's still like the same idea. Like you got to change yourself if you want to change the, but it's like, you can't put words to it. And the cliches are all true and you can say it, but, and wear it, (laughs) but it is that like embodiment piece. And I think it's so beautiful when people can take that inner experience and translate it out into something more than just like a cliche because it sounds like you in your own embodying were then able to help others and this self-care thing became something that you started to share so I'd love to know how you went from the inner to the outer in something that feels so inner right? Being able to share the embodiment. Mm -hmm. Do you have any, like, do you have any memory or that kind of transition from like, okay, I'm ready to share this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, okay. So we, if you're, if you don't sort out your distortions, we all, you know, if we don't sort out, I would say the traumas and I did first, you have to identify what traumas are and they don't have to be. And cause I got stuck in, tr- in stuck in this too. I always thought, Oh, like it's, if I, I never encountered violence before or something major, I, you know, it's, you don't, you don't have to have major traumatic events to sustain a certain event in your personal past history that led to um, a certain behavior or a certain belief or a certain whatever value or values conflict um so when we don't acknowledge those which live in our unconscious subconscious mind we will get distort we'll have distorted thinking um that leads to this is where people get stuck in procrastination they get stuck in turning down opportunities um that will advance their career or their business uh they get stuck in focusing on things that are not going to bring in success for them it's going to just not bring them any anywhere because the unconscious is the main driver of our human behavior. How I started to flip that around was when I, you know, say I'm in a situation with people and somebody maybe said something and I'm being triggered. I started, well, why am I getting so angry? It's their stuff, right? Because you go from s- certain levels to to personal development to empowerment uh to self-discovery first you like you listen to a podcast like this or a book or a seminar it's just like like it's like people who smoke they know it's bad but they still smoke right the knowing the knowledge is not enough you actually have to implement it by being more present like asking yourself questions kind of observing being the observer of yourself right? Observing how are you showing up in the world? I know that can be difficult and it's a trained skill because right now I'm talking to you. I'm, I'm real. I'm just, I'm listening to what you're saying. I have to respond to you. There's a camera in front of me. I'm cognizant of that. So I'm, you know, trying, you know, so it's right now my ego is a little bit on, right? Let's be real. We have to be real as human beings. We have this ego thing. So I'm like being cognizant. How am I looking on camera? What did she say? What did she so you have to develop and cultivate an observer mind and kind of observe yourself and, and to how you're showing up, you know, how are you reacting to certain situations? And because those 
give you answers into your psyche. And once you identify, okay, what is, why am I being triggered right now? What does this have to deal with? Okay, my grade three teacher said this, but whatever it is, let it come up, trust your intuition and really just kind of let things go. And also too, like, especially when people are like, you know, starting businesses and they don't really go. I see so many people, um, they're just like kind of like, they're not really doing something that is, I know this sounds cliche, but it is a cliche for a reason. They're not really doing something that's aligned with them, their values, their beliefs, like what they're really passionate about. If you don't have that, you're not gonna have that energy and fuel to do the amount of work that's required to be successful, okay? I don't, you know, because it's work. And I don't care if someone threw $10 million at you and you're gonna hire, um, you know, 20 employees off the bat. Um, you still have to know how to, you know, draft those job descriptions. You still have to know how to manage them. You still have to know how to cultivate a, a workplace culture that's aligned with your brand. Um, you still have to know how to deal with people and that requires work and it requires, you know, your attention, your energy. And if you're, if you're doing, I just, I just feel like when people are just doing something that's, they're just copying something that's maybe the hot trend or whatever, and they're not, they don't really represent that brand. Um, I just, that's when things kind of just can get irky. Yeah. Yeah. It really sounds like the, everything starts with your self-awareness and being willing to show up for that inner game, that inner work, not just until you get to a certain point. Cause like you said, people could hand you the money, but then like, you're still the same thing everywhere you go, there you are. <laughs> and this is something I've been thinking about in my business a lot is that that my job is the inner job. Like sales is an energetic game. And I think that we always look to the external first or like in our society, we look to the shiny object, the guru, like you said, and this exercise of introspection is something I totally missed at the beginning of my business that is really serving me now, but it feels awkward still to think there's a problem in the business external. I have to go internal to figure it out. Cause I still sometimes want to like Google how to have a tough conversation or things like that. And it's like, oh, back to the inner work. Do you, do you resonate with that? Or do you think that's true? Uh, absolutely. I really, truly, I truly, really believe that what is inside of us really does, if we project the reality based on, you know, what's inside of us, like how we feel, how we think, um, if we're in a scarcity mentality versus abundance mentality. Okay, so for me, this is what I believe too. Like I, you know, I actually, I have an in, kind of an intimate type of experience with this too. I had a family member and this is what people can do too. Like if, you know, if you, everything that we do, every action that we do, it's sending uh, a message to our unconscious mind. So this is why I'm so big on mindset because if we really do reflect, our reality reflects our mindset, um, our inner beliefs and values. So actually I did have a, a family member who um, was just, unfortunately, didn't um, cultivate their own self-worth or cultivate um, their self-discovery process or, you know, just really, in just be empowered within themselves and kind of be more of an independent thinker or they never really, I don't know how, I guess cultivate their personality. Um, you know, they have, they're just constantly running around with chasing after external things. And so their life strategy was to just always copy what I was doing, right? And wanting what I was doing. And there, and you know, that is coming from a place of, let's examine that place of scarcity. Um, they don't, they're not, they haven't achieved success um, because they're not aligned with who they are. You can't, Oprah said it perfectly. You know, Oprah, you know, she 
was Oprah. And she literally said, everyone always asks her, like, how did this, how, you know, how did you become so successful? I mean, she's truly, truly an icon with the media. She's built a huge empire as a result of, you know, be having that iconic TV show. And she said, I, I couldn't be Barbara Walters. You know, I couldn't be Diane Sawyer. I was just Oprah and the biggest, she, she did admit like in the beginning that she was like trying because she didn't know, you know, what she was kind of doing in the beginning. So, you know, she would see, um, I guess you could say role models and, but then she realized I can't be them and no one's going to want to watch another version of Barbara who's not Barbara. So she started to embrace who she was and she just, she had to get to know who she was and she was able to express who she was and Oprah has a very very powerful voice she's a very powerful influence so I just a little just an example you know um because I'm sure you know you can ask every successful entrepreneur um or even just anybody who's successful in their career honestly like you have to truly 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 just really get to know yourself and and really just be empowered from that place because then you're gonna be able to make the right decisions. You're not gonna live in the place of self-doubt. Oh my God, when you're building a business, there's a million, there's a thousand different ways to build a business. There's a thousand different uh, marketing agencies to hire. There's a, a thousand different ways to advertise and blow, you can burn money like crazy. We all know that. So you have to, if you don't really get to know yourself and trust your intuition, you know, it, you're, it, it's, you're, you may not make the, the smartest decisions. And in order to make the smart decisions, you have to cultivate that self-awareness, that self-discovery and just embrace and celebrate you. And mm -hmm. whatever you do, whatever action you do, whatever you decide to build, whatever business you take on, whatever it is, make sure it's aligned with you. And in fact, we hear that from Shark Tank. You know, if you ever knew who's watched Shark Tank, you'll hear the investors say, look, I, I, I don't know anything about that industry. I don't even, I'm not aligned with those values. I'm not aligned with, um, I don't really kind of, you know, it doesn't really get my motor going. Like I, I'm not really passionate about that. So I can't invest in that. So it just goes to show, like, I yeah. think this is overlooked for some reason. I, I, see, I just always see all these people just, you know, oh my God, what's the next new TikTok strategy that's going to make millions of dollars yes. um, or the Instagram reel? Like, come on, we all know there's no such thing as a, there's no secret in business. Yeah, <laughs> there's no shiny object. There's no secret in business. There's no secret. There's no secret. <laughs> totally. You and I are so aligned in that. And I talk about marketing, but I never talk about hashtag strategies or algorithm. I'm like you and talking about these like universal truths, like the laws that you talk to clients about as well. And that with business, it's about relationships. You can build it a billion different ways these days, but at the end of the day, are you making a real connection with real people? And you have to know yourself, like you're saying, to know how you want to approach, how you want to start that relationship. But it's amazing how these cliches, as we're saying, are life truths. And I would love to know from you, because I still think it's just, we can talk about this in the like clouds and like, yeah, the cliches are true in these like generalities, but I'd love to hear from you if there's like an action or like one exercise that we can do to flex that introspection, because this idea, you said something about how you don't really know what you want. You just know what you think other people want. You have your vision board is like, I should have three houses. Your vision board is I should have a family. And especially in business, I see this tension between I want to go for this big goal, hit a million dollars. And then this real feeling of like, but I want to like have a quiet, slower life and just like hang out with my plants sometimes. <laughs> and so if, is there an exercise or some advice you would give people if they're feeling that tension of like, this is what I should want. I don't know if it's right to, to check in and find that truth for themselves. Hmm. I can only speak to my experience around that. So, you know, with me, um, I think, you know, life really, relationships are really, truly 
the most important thing in the relationship we have with ourselves, even in business, um, when building a business, the most important thing is it's really about building relationships, building a relationship with the vendors that you choose, or, you know, the marketing agency that you're choosing, or, you know, if you have got, got your own employees, the relationships you're cultivating with your employees, I mean, uh, so they want to work, you know, hard for you and put in that creative energy like they're they're inspired to do so they're inspired to put their best foot forward you if you don't cultivate relationships in a healthy way they're not going to want to put their best foot forward you know in that relationship with you and um and it doesn't feel good and it just leads to again chaos so for me um it was you know, like real, like for me, I had to, in order when I catapulted in, in business, um, I literally had to cut off, when I say cut off all the toxic relationships, you know, including romantic um, friendships, um, you know, even family too. I, that is when I just catapulted, my energy catapulted. Mm, that's huge. Because I didn't, you know, once I cut that off and I, I, you get, I hit a point when it's like enough is enough. Like a, these relationships burn you out and um, it's just, you're completely, completely got burnt out, drained and really seeing the consequences of it. Um, so, but that's when I learned about myself. I'm like, okay, why did I stay in this for so long, you know? Oh, some people don't even entertain these types of relationships. They literally just, ah, bye. Um, so that's when I got to know, okay, what is this about? Oh, this was about when I was growing up and, you know, I was trying to um, flip around, you know, you know, it was the original relationship, usually related to childhood, you know, trying to get that unconditional love and attention from, you know, a parent and, that is what really kind of that is about. And I didn't really realize it. So you get to know yourself more. I'm like, okay, okay, okay. okay. And, you know, um, in the environment that I speak of was very, it's not, it wasn't very obvious. It was very subtle, you know, um, where you're, you're not really getting a lot of emotional support or whatever. And you get used to, you, 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 you have to understand what kind of person did I have to become? You know, typically it's always the child in your childhood to, to adopt those traits, like to tolerate that, you know, why did I, you know, you have to, and then you let it go, you get it, you let it release, you know, um, once you go through that, once you ask yourself the questions, like what kind of person did I have to become as a result of that, those events? And this is why I'm fixated on trying to flip it around with these individuals. You're just basically, you know, so that's just, that's just one example coming from my life experiences. And so now, you know, it really does give you more energy, the ability to appreciate healthy relationships and cultivate healthy relationships. Um, and yeah, it's, it's just one thing is just asking yourself questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And looking at your patterns like you said like what what is where is this coming from right the external relationship or environment is that mirror for us to ask ourselves good questions and i think that is the the simple yet complex <laughs> solution to so many of the things we see going on in our world and why i'm so inspired by your vision of helping a billion people wake up to this sort of work so if people are vibing with you and like, yeah, I've got some questions to ask. I, I need, you know, to love life more like Rita, where can listeners go to continue this conversation with you and learn more about the work that you're up to? Yeah, they can go to my website, happybeingwell.com. Of course, it's a, you know, we sell self-care products, organic self-care products. Um, we do have a resources webpage section where you can get more inspiration, more education around limit, you know, overcoming your limiting beliefs. There are free eBooks down. There's, there's, I think I believe right now, like 10 eBooks there all on wellness and personal development on how to overcome your limiting beliefs. 
how to banish imposter syndrome, um, a free self-care journal, uh, a meditation made easy guide, along with other like wellness books, such as essential oils and plant-based recipes and such. So, and I have a happy being well podcast where it's all about, you know, wellness, personal development, free guided meditations, guests come on sharing their transformational stories of how they went from Victor to Victor um, and what techniques they utilize to overcome their traumas, obstacles. Um, and then I talk a whole bunch, just me on there as well, about increasing your intuition, increasing your self-worth. Um, yeah. So it's in the Happy Being Well podcast can be found on Apple iTunes or Spotify. Amazing. Yes. We will make sure folks can get all the goods over at happybeingwell.com because this was a wealth of information that you shared with us today. So folks can go get those resources that you generously shared. We appreciate you, Rita. And listeners, I'll be back next week with another inspiring guest that will help you make your dream life your real life.